Tony, it's okay. You can rest now. Because you oh, owe your God. fans of Sherlock Holmes a third movie. Yeah, um, but for now, um, we have to we have to go back at this point of the time of this recording. Eight years. Ten years going from the predicted release date of Sherlock Holmes 3, which will be in 2021. So yeah, in 2011, there were Sherlock Holmes, a game of shadows. Yeah, once again, directed by uh, Guy Ritchie, although this time the writing team is different. I believe as a uh, husband and wife duo this time. So how do you follow up an otherwise pretty good Sherlock Holmes movie that was gritty, but also had a nice bout of mystery to it? Why introduce it with Sherlock Holmes' greatest show ever, Moriarty? Yeah, and in this film is played by uh, Jared Harris, a.k.a. Um, an actor. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm sure he did stuff that we'll look into more during the course of this commentary. Well, I can tell I can tell you a few things he's done. Okay, I guess uh, you can tell us, like, after the start of the commentary, I guess. Yeah, all right, then. Uh, again, start before the uh, books that begin with the Warner Brothers logo in uh, three, two, one, click. Yeah, he, uh, after this, he was in stuff like The Mortal Instruments, City of Bones... The Man from Uncle, which is mm-hmm. guy, which was, which was the film Guy Ritchie made after this. So yeah, needless to say, folks, um, this sequel was a big hit, and fans have been waiting for the third movie for eight years at this point. Holy cow! Yeah, it's written by Michelle and Kieran Mulrooney. Not sure what those folks have done, but if this movie is anything to go by, they're pretty good. They're okay, I think. I don't think this film is as good as the first one. Really? But, um, but I mean, I, I still enjoy it. Uh, I forgot what the general consensus with this movie was compared to the first one. I know that people like this one, but I forget if this one was, like, better or less than the first mix- one. It got a mixed reception. So, we start with Jude Law, a.k.a. Dumbledore, oh, wow. so opening with... Well, yeah, that... Yeah, but them blowing up a building in Strasbourg. Strasbourg? I don't know how you say it. Really there we go. About it. Meanwhile, while this is going on, Jude Law also has to deal with a corrupt wizard Grindelwald. I mean, uh, ahem. Sorry, wrong British continuity. Um, but but with Jover, doesn't he have? Doesn't he have to try and get Captain Marvel to have a personality? Oh god, he was in that too. Yeah. Everyone really is joining the MCU, huh? Yeah, yeah. especially a couple actors in this film. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr., obviously. <laughs> uh, Jude Law. I think, yeah, I think even um, even a returning um, Irene Adler played by Rachel McAdams. Rachel McAdams is in Doctor Strange. Oh, she was. Where she interacted with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Another Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Pity they weren't on screen together for very long. Hey, Sherlock. Hmm. No. So we got a Canadian playing an American and an American playing a Brit. Oh, Irene Adler was American? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, her character's American. It's just the actress is from Canada. Huh, I forgot Irene Adler was American. I thought she was British. Dwayne, what are you talking about? Those are the same thing. <laughs> of course. <laughs> ah. Pity that. If if you can eat the bread, that is. <laughs> Mozart, eh? Lovely. Just to be clear, I only recognise as Mozart because I've read the subtitles. So yeah, right, just uh, take off that silly disguise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, see you. Uh, funny, yeah. uh, I, I don't remember Mozart's compositions involving kicking one of his assistants in the groin. Must have been in the 9 for 10th uh, rendition. Yes, um, imagine those volunteers having to come up, or if it's the same guy constantly having his balls kicked. <laughs> oh, well Pops. then, uh, Kurosaki has done a great service to the music industry then. Uh, don't mind us, officers. We were not having a fight, we swear. We're just, uh, treating to this, uh, lorry bomb here. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah. So, uh, how's, uh, how's Holmesy gonna get out of this mess? You know what's yeah, funny? You, you... One of those thugs looks like Ben Affleck. <laughs> no, that would have been something if we suddenly had Batman in this film. <laughs> okay, uh, defeated with the uh, aid of Peach? Or is that an apple? I don't know. Yeah, it's an apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take the bullets out of the gun, but you can have the apple. Tuh. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, auction time. Okay, so basically, um, Adler is trying to deliver a package to um this guy. Oh yeah, this is this is Victorian times. Back in the day when a hundred pounds was like a lot of money. Uh huh. Uh, no, don't. Just to be extra certain. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Wow, that was uh, great reflexes. So, um, yeah, I've I've seen this film before. How about you two? I have, yeah. Have you, Fury? For what? Have you seen this film before? No. Ah. All right. I, I, oh, God. I, what did he just tell you? Um, what do I do to make sure that one gets incinerated? <laughs> A million pounds. That'll you know, clear that, the house. Yeah, you know, at least me wondering. Um, Robert Downey Jr. hasn't had to put on a British accent for like. Well, by the time that f new film comes out, it'll probably be a decade. I wonder how he's still going to be able to pull it off. Because he's been Tony Stark for a decade at this point. Up, 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 up. Hands off the nads, lady. You don't get your reward until you've done the work. So he's short then, is he? Uh, nah, more like intellect was. Oh. Sherlock Boom, eh? <laughs> Sherlock Boom Holmes. My favorite character. Okay. Yeah, I'll check actually, how tall is Jared Harris? According to IMDb, he's five foot ten. So, huh? I'm taller than him. That, that, well, he's not exactly short, but yeah, I'm, even I'm taller than him. Ah, a dart. Yeah, shit. And unfortunately, it's not the kind of dart you have in the pub. Mm-hmm. Well, unless you're uh, actually very, sure. Very, very Do you have those darts in Welsh pubs? Sometimes. What, the ones that you can kill people with? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, what kind of pubs are they? I mean, you can kill people with normal darts anyway. 
Yes, but this one it we might have take to... some time. But <laughs> we have to be especially sure. <laughs> so, um, is is um is a few interesting things. Um, Warner Brothers fast tracked this sequel because of the success of the 2009 film, which meant that Robert Downey Jr. had to leave Cowboys and Aliens. From from what I hear, it was um, oh what a, a sad sad. Part. Oh, what a sad, sad fate for him. And Guy Ritchie having to drop out of a film adaptation of Lobo. Hmm. Wait, as in Lobo from DC? Yeah. Huh. That's, that's interesting, because Guy Ritchie at this point was um, in a... Um, was was pretty much exclusive as was, was an exclusive Warner Brothers guy at this point, so... Oh boy, someone holds a lot of influence here. It's like that bit at the end of John Wick 2 where, where one guy has the power to disperse of an entire group of people. And here we go, we finally get to see the man constantly kept in shadows, Moriarty. He sound... But he sounds different. Hmm. Yeah, that's the thing, in the previous film he was played by a completely different actor. Who was that actor? Because I could never remember for the look of me. I, I can't remember either, but he was but he was really different. So it's like with Thanos, how, you know, um, at first he's played by... Who? But then he's played by actor you remember. Yeah. But um, and when they re-aired the first film on TV, they had Jared Harris dub over the guy. Really? Yeah. Surprised they never included that in later DVD editions. Mm. Oh, so, uh, oh dear. So, uh, Rachel McAdams has been fired. Oh, well. Eh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure if she'll, um... No, don't worry, I'm sure she'll, uh... take a departure while and tell Sherlock about it. Your thoughts, Roy? Uh, oh. Well... Oh, well, um, so, yeah, um, yeah, uh, a major character from the previous film is now dead. Ha. Huh. Bummer. I mean, on one hand, it does show, uh, it does go to show how ruthless Moriarty can be. Yeah, and admittedly, she was a character who was constantly getting in over her head, despite Sherlock's many, many, many warnings. Oh, and all of a sudden we went Harry Potter there. So the moral of the story is, um, it's always listen to Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> and, um, uh, Sherlock is, Sherlock kind of takes it all right, all things considered. Uh, he doesn't know yet. Well, I mean, even if he does, he's a is he well, he's a he's a bit he's a he's a sociopath, any so. Hey, Dumbledore. Sociopath, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jude Law in a in a in a playing a well-known fictional character from a book, and it's a film by Warner Brothers. Wow. <laughs> How uncanny can you get? Also, uh, wow, so they know you could move the entire Amazon rainforest in here. Well, it is Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. So basically, that particular bombing we saw in Strasbourg earlier has been part of a um, string of terrorist attacks, but, but with the with the aid of a mystery perpetrator, what's Moriarty in it? <laughs> what do you mystery think, Sherry? Perpetrator. Don't. <laughs> The goat did it. <laughs> the goat did it. Yeah, yeah. What? The goat blew up the buildings. Yes. <laughs> I always, I always knew those goats were trouble. <laughs> I, I, I love how Watson is just going along with this at this point. Yeah, he's just kind of used to it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, try saying that ten years later. Then you'll have really missed him. 
Yeah, I wonder if that's going to be the sequel gap in universe at this point. Wouldn't surprise me. Just any excuse to say long time no see, isn't it? Of course. Maybe. So, um, yeah, uh, Sherlock has perfected the art of um, blending in with your environment. So he's already he's much more he's a much more successful detective than Iron Man. There's a snake in here. I mean, does, does Iron Man in the comics have a um, have a version of his suit that can change to blend in with the environment? Yes, holy cow, yes. He has, like, a suit for practically everything. Let's not forget, he made even Spider-Man a few suits. I, me I meant one that can change, um, on the fly. Oh boy, a goat that needs worming. <laughs> Again, uh, Mr. Hudson, how much is he paying you? Not enough. And yet she still sticks around. Yeah. Ah, oh, Dr. Watson has found, uh... Has found love, and he's gonna marry the love of his life tomorrow. Oh, have you finally gotten over your little quarrel with Grindelwald? According to J.K. Rowling. Wrong universe, Jova. <sighs> I know, it's just the joke is so easy to make. Yeah, again, I know, same actor, same studio, but, um... And also the same London. <laughs> it's just the right... Well, actually, no, this is Victorian times, and Crimes of Grindelwald is set in the Ooh. late 1920s, I think. Looks like Sherlock's a bit obsessed, even for Sherlock's standards. Hmm. Yeah, that's another thing I've always wondered. Um, I wonder how no one picked up that the professor of a prestigious um, academy and also one of the most respected people in the country um, but didn't think of, hmm, this guy's been missing from his office for quite a few days. And Admi um, Admittedly, as suspicious as it would be, would you automatically assume that your missing teacher is a mad bomber just because he's missing? His beard might disappear as a dead giveaway, in my opinion. Fair enough. But still, though, it's like, oh, it's like, imagine if, like, your old chemistry teacher went missing, and then all of a sudden there were these chemical bombings going around. Like, admittedly, there are a lot of chemistry teachers out there. It's kind of hard to, you know, narrow it down to just one. Also, it's Moriarty. He probably had some sort of failsafe, like, I don't know, his butler or maid would say, Oh, he's just away here or there. Um, uh, how lethal is embalming fluid? <laughs> when is he not verging on psychotic? I mean, he's, I mean, he's, sociop oh. he's sociopathic, but he's on the way to psychotic, I think. Yes, Yuri? I was about to say he is excited about some screwy things, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, he's excited about potentially taking down one of the smartest people on the planet. Yeah, if there's one thing Sherlock likes, it's a challenge, and Moriarty is quite possibly his ultimate challenge. That's another thing as well. Um, they've already peaked with Moriarty, the most well-known Sherlock Holmes villain. What are they going to do for the third one? Oh no, not the dog. Poor dog. Mm. No, Sherlock, no! Oh. <laughs> oh, that worked. Yay! His adrenaline worked. How many times are you gonna kill my dog? Ah, <laughs> oh, how nice. A wedding gift. Uh, oh my. I'm guessing John Wick isn't a fan of, uh, Sherlock. Uh, yeah, so, well... Yeah, great. Great, great disguise there, Holmesy. What, what saves him from getting the wick beat down is the fact that he produced an antidote that made the dog more energetic than ever. So he gets a pass. If it did kill the dog, though, Sherlock may have to leave the country for a bit. 
Oh, I see. So basically, to try and uh, to try and uh, disguise himself, he goes completely overboard. I guess. To the, where it's so, to the point where it's so ridiculous that Moriarty won't think twice. A.K.A. Bros Before Hose, Watson. Bros Before Hose. Uh, Sherlock does, maybe. Well, then again, I did see uh, Mr. Holmes, and, well... Ho is Holmes is a complicated guy. He needs just the right woman for him. The problem is that the right woman for him is incredibly, incredibly hard to come by. For multiple reasons. Hmm. Basically, I'd say it's more so a case that Holmes is, I don't want to say entirely jealous, but kind of peeking on that is in, he's afraid that if Watson becomes married, then the old duo may have to split up. Oh, and now we're introduced to Sherlock's brother, Mycroft, played by Stephen Fry. Mycroft is an hmm. interesting venture here. See, believe it or not, Mycroft, in many cases, is potentially smarter than Sherlock Holmes. However, what keeps him from being better than Sherlock is his laziness. The guy is incredibly, incredibly the laziest fop you'll ever find. Plus, he, plus, depending on the adaptation, he can be very, very uh, big in the weight department, if you know what I'm saying. That too, yeah. What he has over Holmes and smarts, he lacks in uh, athleticism and actually giving a crap. He's also he's also got height over. Heck, um, in some adaptations, he's also afraid of leaving his house too. Because he, he doesn't want to be away from his precious profiteroles. Well, mm -hmm. then again, neither neither do I. So. So who's I playing know. his brother here? Stephen Fry. Oh, I've seen him before in some stuff. He's been in um. He was in a uh, Thunderpants. Uh huh. Thunderpants. Plus, he was the uh, narrator in uh, if you, uh, at least one of the Little Big Planet games. Ah. And, and if you're British, he narrates the Harry Potter audiobooks. Yeah. Plus, he played the Prime Minister in that 24 Live Another Day miniseries. Ah. And a famous TV presenter around here. He, he presented a uh, panel comedy panel show named QI for many years. Like, if you're British, or you should recognize him straight away. If not, then you might struggle. He seems like that kind of yeah. British guy who I should know. Like, I feel like I know. But maybe I don't entirely know. I get what know. you mean. Yeah. To Americans, he's that second British actor that everyone's seen, but whose name you can't remember. Yeah. We have a lot of those. He's also famous for being in that uh, a bit of Fry and Laurie show, where he and he and Laurie were a duo. <laughs> Keeper of the broom-covered state. But yeah, it's like you said, lack of ambition. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, there, there's, there's who he's looking for, I think. <laughs> oh, so this so there's rugby club bakes couldn't make it. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, so much for your bachelor's night, dude. It's kind of been hijacked. He didn't forget. He's like he said. He just he tried to invite his friend. Yeah, I get the feeling maybe Sherlock warned them away or thing. Potentially. No. Surely oh. no, mates. 
Damn. <laughs> well, I have to say, Watson ain't taking none of Holmes' crap this movie. Well, I'll be fair, um, he's just about to get away from a guy who um, is both eccentric and can be a pain in the ass. And yet somehow he still loves him as a friend. Hello, hello, what's this? Is this our uh, Rachel McAdams replacement? Uh huh. Madame Simza Heron, played by uh, Swedish actress Numi Rapassi. Huh. Famous for being in, um, let me see. Famous for being in the Swedish film adaptations of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, played with fire, kick the hornet's nest. I don't know if those were good or bad, so I'll just in a smile and nod. And she was in Bright. Oh. My condolences. Yeah. Well, at least she is. I wonder if she'll be in the sequel. Is it getting a sequel? No, no, don't no. Know. I was talking about the sequel to this movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Well, she was also in Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Like, huh. how successful was Bright? Because I know it's a Netflix thing, but. Apparently a lot of people w watched it. Yeah, yeah, mm. it was successful. The problem was the reception. Yeah, well, the the writer hasn't done anything since, although that might have something to do with the fact that apparently he was a bit of a knob. Mm -hmm. To put it lightly. But yeah, here's some uh, establishment for the character that the actress plays in this movie. She's a, um, well, you know, from the name Madam... She's one of those, um, what are they called? Gypsies? Maybe not gypsies, uh, fortune tellers. Yeah, fortune teller. Yeah. Yeah, um, by the way, she won't be attending, I'm afraid. <laughs> Imagine that. What does it say? Hmm. It's in French, so... Perhaps I, I must pay to purpose. change the course of history. I have finally found my purpose in life. Huh. I think she wants to say anything right now. But, um, but mine, they don't look like they can hold their position for very long, because you about that guy struggling to stay up there. I know, right? How long has he been up there? Well, Holmes is going to sort him out. Of course. Ow. Dang, that's quite an omelet you're making. <laughs> Aye. Yeah, I'm always wondering, uh, if I, I get this is probably just like a second in his mind, but imagine if uh, it was taking this long in real time and the guy was just like, oh, I'll just stab him now. Mmm. <laughs> 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 Oh. Eh? Dude, you oh. messed with the plan! No, you, you know how Sherlock doesn't like his plans being messed up? <laughs> Don't worry, he's just dead tired. Yeah. 
say obviously filming for this took place in um in the UK, mostly around London. Oh, look at that. The guy had a vest protecting him of sorts. Hmm. They even actually filmed the stuff at Strasbourg in Strasbourg. Ha! Huh, cute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically they film a bunch of um stuff in um in where the countries are meant to be. If this were the, if this were the TV show, they'd be filming it in Cardiff. Yeah. Ow. Yet another scar to add to the pile, eh, Holmes? Ooh, ow. That's going to leave a mark. Oh, this no. This is all like a very clumsy version of a Kingsman fight scene. <laughs> well, considering Although, the olden times, yeah. Quiet. Albeit with um, one with not as many camera cuts. Mm -hmm. Oh, snap. Well, the cards weren't that specific. <laughs> Trapped by the rope of fate, aren't we? A cockfight. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> How convenient. Um, you know, when we said cockfights, mates, we didn't mean you. Well, you know what they say, improvisation in the light of every failure must come. Where'd that quote come from? Me. Uh, sure. Don't worry, look, I tell you, centuries from now they'll be writing down my stories like it's, um, the next coming of Christ. I think, um, I think Watson might have had a bit too much to drink. Yeah, uh -huh. but it looks like he's got a lot of winnings. Oh! And there goes his winnings. <laughs> if, if not, if not lost in the rubble, um, probably have to give a lot of it back to pay for the damage. And who's at the center of this? Holmes. <laughs> it just never, never fails. Uh oh. Yeah, run, grab the money. I got. <laughs> aren't they basically committing theft? Ah, uh, it's the olden day Lon- well, Dwibs, it's the old Victorian days. You see some, you get some. Unfortunately, we don't have stuff like all those checks and balances and, you know, legality matters. Hi, Watson. Yeah, well... Ah. Well, at least he got some of his money back. <laughs> thanks, Minecraft, thanks. Well, provided, um... Provided Watson's sober enough for his own wedding. <laughs> Well, at least he's drunk enough to have taken the loss of money rather well. Uh, something tells me if he was sober, he'd probably be about to kill Holmes for that. Mm. Hey, at least you can say he had an exciting bachelor's night. If he'll even remember it. Yeah, oh, oh, oh sorry Sherlock, was there something important going on today? I can see why the wizarding books may have omitted this from Dumbledore's past. Yeah, I mean, do you, do you ever recall that part in the Harry Potter book? Dumbledore woke up and hammered out of his mind in the carriage. Huh, must have missed that one, eh, Shiroi? Yeah, M maybe that was added in fairly recently. I'll have to check J.K. Rowling's Twitter account. Now, how the heck they kept Rita Skeeter from blowing that story wide open is anyone's guess. 
Also, wow. waking up to bagpipes, that's unpleasant. Oh, <laughs> ha have you had experience with such, Jeroy? No, this just looks unpleasant. <laughs> In regards to what you said earlier, Jova, I would say Rita Skeeter wasn't born yet, but considering Fantastic Beasts 2 had McGonagall appear eight years before she was even supposed to be born. Oops. Yeah. So, Watson, you're going to look oh so great for your wedding day. Uh, Holmesy. Holmes. <laughs> well, at least he cleaned him up enough. Decently. Yeah. Uh, my darling, why do you smell of beer? Um, it's a very, very, very long and convoluted story. That's to say, Holmes. That's all you need to know. Uh, he fell into a... He was getting ready, but... That's all she needs to know, blast it! Don't worry. You you just fell into one of my, um... Reg you just fell into one of my barrels of alcohol, and we hadn't had time to wash it away. Yes, that's totally what happened. Yeah, he's like, oh, thank God we got that out of the way. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, now I've got, um, I think, I believe this is Moriarty's right-hand man. Mm-hmm. Colonel Sebastian Moran. Played by Paul Anderson, another English actor who I swear I should recognize him somewhere. Oh, he was Guy O'Gisborne in Robin Hood, the 2018 movie. Oh, yeah, that. Oh, thing. dear. Ah, at the good old. Oh, maybe the professor's not missing. Well, there's apparently he's a man of class. He, play he listens to friends. What's his name? <laughs> There we go. Bishwise. Yeah. Other stuff Paul Anderson's been in is stuff like Peaky Blinders. Was that any good? That, that is good. Uh huh. I always still feel sorry when I come to an actor who I just don't recognize but seems like he's a good actor and I just haven't seen his or her stuff. And unfortunately, it's been in mostly um, mediocre or crap films. Yeah. An autograph. Yeah, I know you're terribly sorry of your evil plan. I mean, your um, uh, your uh, examination markings, but um, have an autograph, please. <laughs> You sure about yes, that, um... Holmes? Uh oh. Do you... Yeah, I don't think Moriarty's that um that merciful. I bet you do. But don't shake his hand. Uh, oh. Don't worry, he's not the Joker. It's not like he has a lethal joy buzzer up his hand. I don't think they were even really that possible by this point. Mm hmm. Amazing what you can get from someone's handwriting. Hmm. Uh oh. It's 
So, uh, yeah, obviously, um, Moriarty ain't exactly going to be um, that mer- merciful, like I mentioned before. Mm hmm. As for what happened to Renee. Yeah, well, yeah, we figured that out, but yeah, um, Irene's dead. Oh, what a shame, Bert. Okay, now he knows. So, uh, yeah, it's official now, as mentioned in this movie. Uh, Adler's dead. Uh, are you guys affected by it? The game is on. What about you, Shuri? It's... it's fine. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Irene Adler's dead, it's fine. I'm I'm like, this is fine. <laughs> I'll be put like this. In some way, she kind of had it coming, so I can see how she would have died. It's sort of like a Batman Catwoman thing, like, you know, the love interest gets a little too deep into the crime pool. Sometimes you can't get out of that. It's weird also, like, I never could quite tell if they were setting them up to be a love interest. Well, I mean, okay, obviously he wanted a love interest, but it was always a weird case of, are they really setting them up to be a love interest or just really good friends? Hmm. What about you, Dwibs? Uh, what was the question again, sorry? The one you asked. Um, about Irina. How did you feel about Irene's death? Um, it was a little bit of a bummer, but, you know, again, you know, uh, at the time, um, I was trying to, I was just concentrating on the film itself here. I wasn't really trying to remember much about the first one. But, yeah, again, a bit of a bummer, but, well, Moriarty's on the big screen, yay! Yeah. Hey, we lost Irene, but we finally got Moriarty. Like, seriously, there's one thing I remember back in the day. It's everyone was theorizing, what does Moriarty look like behind those shadows and everything? Now we know, completely different from the first film, as a completely different voice. But don't you see, it was Jared Harris all along. Again, it's weird how they never, redu- if they redubbed him for the television show, well, I wonder why they never redubbed him on the actual DVD slash Blu-ray. Well, granted, I guess when the DVD first came out, sure, but, huh, never on a new edition. Oh, well. So. So, yeah. Off go the new Mr. and Mrs. Watson on their honeymoon. Yes, off to Hogwarts. I mean, uh, wherever, Glasgow. Yeah, they're even on a freaking train. <laughs> Again, I know I shouldn't be, but come on, the joke is just too easy. Yeah, a train, Jude Law, Warner Brothers. Old habits. Uh-oh. Hopefully it's not a Dementor knocking. Oh, good. Just a trolleyman. Huh. Uh-oh. Um, uh, oh. Yeah, as I figured. Oh, darling, I must say, when you said that this honeymoon would be rather exciting, I wasn't expecting this. Oh, snap. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> okay, kudos to her. She's taking this in pretty good stride, all things considered. Even got a one-liner in. Yeah. I think it's time for you to leave but serve it all at the platform. <laughs> I don't know that conversation would go. Wow, that's a tall lady. Oh. Wow, a, a kick-ass lady. I know. Aw, isn't she cute, Shiroi? It's Iron Woman. Yeah, I've never heard of that one. <laughs> well, that works. <laughs> Hopefully you'll trust uh, me after this. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, well done, Sherlock. 
Okay, but I can't hold that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, She's crap. safe now. Again, I just threw her out of the train. <laughs> okay, in Watson's defense, yeah, I think I'd snap too if I thought my new wife was dead. After all this. <laughs> Oh snap. Yeah, I reckon that was a bad guy strategy. Alright, so they're uh they're arguing. Uh okay, kill him. <laughs> he was there all along. Hmm, what the hell this is gonna work? Hmm. Phosphorus highly flammable. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. He sabotaged the gun, so it would explode. And blow them up. And there's a, yeah, there's a shot of Robert Downey Jr.'s... Uh, Hex for the ladies? Oh yeah, I'm sure they're getting a plenty of show. Yeah, I think we see more of his body here than any of the Iron Man movies. So, Shroy, would you say that this is the most exciting wedding and honeymoon you've seen so far? Exciting or really bloody inconvenient? Um, you decide. Both? Yeah. Grenade! Sorry, a bit late on that. Rather <laughs> slower. Oh. Yeah, come on here, go! <laughs> Why is there a strange half-naked man in our carriage? Um, step lively now, dear. We've learned never to ask these questions of the unnatural. Normally that just leads to more trouble. <laughs> That's good job we're not in Gears of... Good job we're not in the new Gears of War game. <laughs> Can't smoke there. Yeah, <laughs> my condolences to Gears of War fans. And that must be the angry letter from the Gears of War's fans. Yeah, okay, I get it. Being angry with them, I get it. But I don't condone shooting any of them. <laughs> Think of it as an interesting metaphor. They'll write the letters out in the bullets. Come on, lipstick. Still not a good idea. Anyway, in terms of the uh, music score for this film, both uh, Guy Ritchie and the returning Hans Zimmer uh, went all over the shop to um, to get to get some more authentic bits in the score. He went to Slovakia, Italy, and uh, France. <laughs> uh oh! <laughs> I love how that guy just closes his eyes and releases himself to his fate. Uh, and an act of uh, charity. Um, yeah. Zimmer, who was um who was um who, who was moved by um well not moved exactly, horrified by all the poverty he had seen around Central Europe, donated a portion of the proceeds from his soundtrack to um help pay for the poor being able to get water heating and a bus fare for the children to go to school. 
So anyway, this is what happened to Mary. Amazing shot, but he timed it just right so that it wouldn't kill her. It would hurt, but it wouldn't kill her. Or knock her out. <laughs> Happy wedding day! Yes, I'm the one that people won't write about as much, but I'm still just as memorable, I assure you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he kind of just rolls with it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, you stuck with Sherlock for a while longer. Complete with lipstick that would make the Joker compliment him, holy cow. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, you enjoying wearing that? Because you've been wearing it for a while. <laughs> Again, Warner Brothers. You have to <laughs> wonder. Yeah. Filming of this film only really ended around the. Filming of this film only really ended around three months before the um, film released. Huh. And it turned around... out. And it turned out good still. I mean, despite the somewhat rust nature of it. Really around September. They were filming for that long. How did How did Downey manage to get um? Manage to get managed to get Avengers. He found a way, like, holy cow, Downey is an incredibly devoted actor, although, to be fair, after this movie, he would be stuck with the MCU for quite a bit, which would prevent him from doing practically anything else. Well, there was one um, indie movie he did, but apparently that wasn't very good. Oh, an indie movie, eh? What was it? It's called The Judge, I think. Huh. So, yeah, um, yeah. They, were fil they started filming Avengers Assemble, the film's title around here, um, April 2011? Oh my god, that's right, this came out the same year as Avengers. Actually, Avengers came out in 2012. Oh god, that's right, yeah. Never mind, yeah, 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 that's right, actually it was Captain America first Avenger that came out. Yeah. Which is funny, considering a certain subject that will come up later in this movie. Oh. Yeah, yeah it pretty much ran through most of 2011. Turns out Holmes is giving his own bit of mourning to Irene. By laying her handkerchief at sea. Alright, moving on. So now we got Mariotti at a book signing. Uh huh. In France. I oh, yeah. Uh, Can believe his right hand Morse. man, Colonel Sebastian Morin. Well, yeah, as I said that earlier. He's also a character from the Sherlock Holmes uh, books. <laughs> oh, I take it to the opera. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Sorry, you don't get to go to the theatre, mate. Get back to work. In the books, uh, Sean Moran is described as the second most deadliest man alive. The first being Moriarty, of course. And don't worry, he lives up to that title just as much in this movie, too, you'll come to see. Oh, and, uh, oh, yeah, you know the whole cross-dressing disguise? Yep. Yep. That was Robert Downey Jr.'s idea. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was gonna be a, he was gonna be a priest in the script, but... But yeah. instead he did the cross-dressing. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the movie benefits from it. That was hilarious. 
And also, funnily enough, in one of Sherlock Holmes' other stories called The Adventure of the Mazarin Stone, yeah. uh, Holmes did disguise himself as an old woman. Ha! Huh, go figure. I wonder if they'll adapt any of those stories in the Grady's Attorney games. The first of which finally has its fan translation completed. Sherlock Holmes films are probably the closest, all the TV shows will be the closest you'll get to that. You know, actually, you know what would be amazing is if they have Benedict Cumberbatch show up in the third Sherlock Holmes movie. Nah, too obvious. <laughs> oh. <laughs> laughing like a schoolgirl. <laughs> we don't want trouble here, stranger. Yeah, for some reason the French tra the translation of the French bits aren't on my copy. Huh, basically he said it's about her brother. Yeah. Do they not have it in the settings or anything, or is it just I guess it's no. Netflix being weird. Huh. Ooh, hedgehog delicacy. Get it? Because we're in France. Heaven, Rolling guess... around at the speed of roadkill. I guess France likes hedgehog goulash. Might as well, might as well fed the dogs. Why, Holmes, if I didn't know better, I'd say you're looking for a new love interest to replace your dead one. <laughs> yeah, says the man who throws women from traits. <laughs> Touche. Well, well, to be fair, he wants to get out of, um... You know, Goodwill. Yeah. Yeah, right. So yeah, um, Numi Rapassi's character has been searching for her brother. Everyone's looking for her brother. Moriarty, Sherlock, Watson. Her brother apparently has something on the brown. What that is, we'll come to see later. So don't lick it. <laughs> What if it were bloody? You got someone's disease. Well, back in the day, they didn't really have as much hygienic laws. Oh uh, yeah, it was Victorian times. He said he where, would never um, go back. Where, where a fancy dress sense and um, posh politeness helped to disguise the fact that Britain was pretty much a shithole. I know, right? Aside from... Let, let's just ignore that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never mind the fact that some of those dresses literally contorted the people's inner organs, too. I will set a meeting with Ravasche. Thank you. Ha! <laughs> huh, I was right, she is with hey, you. Did you have a bad run-in with gypsies before, Holmes? I don't mind that. Dance time! Well, we can't do that exactly, Joe, but there's no, um... Yeah. There's no, there's no discos. <laughs> Imagine, Sherlock Holmes at the disco. <laughs> Doesn't seem like that would be his cup of oh. tea. It's a um, nice thing to wake up to, Stephen Fry's nudity. Yeah, I'd be a bit shocked too if I saw that. And he's completely unfazed by this. <sighs> well, that's my craft for you. Don't show any flinching. It helps exert your superiority.
Oh. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Oh, thank God. I mean, could you imagine if what, I mean, how would that have made any sense anyway? <laughs> yeah. Dear wife, turns out I actually bloody really hate you. Yes. Bye. <laughs> Home strung you from the train was all part of the plan to get away from you. Yeah, yeah. Happy yeah. honeymoon! In fact, in fact, I regret so very much you didn't hit solid ground. In fact, I regret marrying you so much that instead I'm going to go and romance Johnny Depp instead. No, I'm not letting that one go. Also, Holmes lied. I got so drunk. <laughs> yeah, I got so pissed drunk. I had all the money I could have wanted, but then it was lost to me in a second. P.S. Um, if my brother is ever naked in front of you, please be assured he means no harm. <laughs> He's just very eccentric. Incredibly eccentric. Yeah. He's a lot more relaxed than his brother. Yeah, that's the thing about Minecraft, you know? Lack of ambition, but lack of phasing too. But he's not got a lack. But he's not got a lack of money. I can tell you that. Ain't that the true? So anyway, but is this the uh, the night of the opera? So it seems. A lot of uh preparation needed for such an event. Mm hmm Of course, searching them for weapons, just in case. Wouldn't want anything nasty to occur. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, for, for a second there, I thought Irene Adler came back. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been um, quite a shock? Yeah. Well, she's not going to be in the third movie, I know that much. It is hard for me to get out these days. I am happy to see you. Huh. I'd rather share this moment. Yeah, with your English friends. <laughs> Imagine a wine that's aged for 200 years. Just how would that taste? So, did he, when he said the revolution, is that the revolution where uh, the French kept cutting people's heads off? Possibly. Probably. I got, I got that off Horrible Histories. Uh-huh. Do you have Horrible Histories over there, Jova? Uh, is that a TV show? And a book series. Um, we may. Huh. Well, at least now he's speaking English. Not that there's anything wrong with speaking his native tongue, especially in this country. Uh oh, dude, whenever whenever your job is almost done, that's not normally a good thing when it comes to working with Moriarty. Basically, Claude has been having to take responsibility for the acts of terror as the fall guy. Of course he has his wife and children. Yeah, but are you sure Moriarty? going to keep to that deal. And frankly, have you seen his henchman retirement plan? It doesn't exactly go that well for the henchman. It's even in writing. As soon as you've fulfilled your um, obligation... Yeah, that. Oh, God. We have a misunderstanding on our hands. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> further need. Sorry, do you think he needs that pistol anymore now? Holmes doesn't um, seem to. Probably not. Yeah. Hmm. Secret tunnel! Yeah, I've seen Avatar. 
mind, and they exactly do a very good job of uh, keeping it discreet. Ah, whole Victorian times and people, while having good hands work, weren't exactly the most thorough in hiding stuff. <sighs> Bit sloppy too, jeez. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't think you even need Sherlock Holmes to figure that out. <laughs> Sandbag, eh? Okay, now let's just hope the bad guys don't want the most crappy, crappiestly disguised secret exits. <laughs> Here's hoping. Well, he just did, honey. Well, yeah, I mean, did you see him blow his brains out? Please. Uh, to the opera? She just saw her. Was that her brother? No, 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 no. Thankfully, that wasn't her brother who shot himself. <laughs> Nothing to see here, gents. Just coming up from our lovely sewer walk. Yeah, I'll give the movie this. It has some pretty good set work and designs. Well, I think this film had a bit had a bigger budget than the previous film. Uh, cost one hundred and twenty five million dollars, made five hundred and forty five, mm -hmm. which is a decent uh, decent profit. Yeah, I'll be honest though. Um, opera has never really been my thing. Oh. <laughs> it's acquired. Yeah. As a certain movie established. Yeah. By the Which way, Joker, here's the, here's the thumbnail. Uh, Far From Home. I won't spoil what they do, but ah, let's just say okay. Far From Home establishes that opera can be a very acquired taste. Yeah. There's the thumbnail <laughs> for you, Joker. Dandy. So yeah, speaking of money, on a budget of $125 million, this movie made five hundred. Yeah, I just, I just said that. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Getting deja vu over here. Me uh, too. my echo. <laughs> I guess so. Oh, you, your echo has an American accent. How interesting. Interesting oh, how that works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, come now, dudes. What's to be unfortunate about it? <laughs> it's, it's not British. Ours is sophisticated and suave. And yet, who is the one who lost the Revolutionary War and overtaxed for tea? Who's the one whose men's football team didn't even make it to the World Cup? Who's the one whose women's World Cup key team got beaten by ours? We still made it very far. Ladies, the please. Men's team didn't make it at all. <laughs> uh oh. Speaking of sophisticated, there's Moriarty himself there. He has a keen yeah. eye on things. Don't you think that's going to look even more suspicious? The man who's secretly behind the stuff is conveniently. At the very scene of which all these um, assassination attempts and terrorist attacks are being um, committed. Nothing that can't be paid off. Uh oh. Oh, Holmes made a mistake. Oh snap! Turns out the threat is elsewhere. You've been played like a fiddle. What do you know? Despite him being there, that won't be where stuff is going on. Admittedly, when you think about it, though, why would Moriarty be at the site of one of his own bombings? Or assassination attempts. <laughs> though politics may divide us. Oh, yeah, when the friends were trying to get united. Business will unite us. Uh-oh. Is that a... Is that a there's politics in business. Mm. The cake was a bit explosive. Is that a business meeting? Well, it ended with a bang. Yeah. The cake might not have been a lie, but it was a bomb. <laughs> and it killed, um, everyone killed everyone there, including, as we'll find out a bit later, Moriarty's target. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a way, it was also to get Holmes away from the opera. But why, you may well, wonder? Well, mainly just so he wouldn't piss him off. Yeah, see? Well, pull it all there. Well. So, to, to disguise the assassination by, by gunshot, he blew up the whole freaking building. Just to be extra safe. Mind again, Holmes is there. <laughs> wow, this assassin knew how to use a tripod before Zack Snyder did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he had a better position, but he kind of gave away his location. Not that it mattered, he, um, he succeeded. Yep. Holmes may notice it, but the general public is what they're worried about. Hmm. So yeah, um, bit of a familiarity. Yep. Yeah. An old friend of yours. Oh. A marksman. But he got a, but he got discharged. Dishonorably, Dishonorably, mind you. That's the worst kind of discharge you can get. I thought the worst kind of discharge you could get was execution. Well, despite that. Yeah. Wow, it's a lovely day in France. Never mind last night. Yeah, I mean, um, I've, yeah, I, I thought, I thought carrying on with stuff despite how shitty things can get was a British stereotype, not a French one. <laughs> I've like taken an episode of the um, the David Tennant era of Doctor Who, all those assassinations, yet uh, they still have dinner. I know, right? I mean, you gotta eat. Yeah, I mean, why not just... Why do you even need the god job? I mean, he's gonna get blown up, so... Well, here's the thing. Some people may survive an explosion here, they're depending on how the shrapnel comes. The bullet there is their insurance. Well, again, he probably didn't count on that. Well, mind you, Holmes has interfered, so... You think Moriarty at this point would have made uh, Holmes fail safes? Well, that's probably part of why he did it, in case Holmes uh, interfered. Plus, he made that false trail to the opera. I have, I have my wig. <laughs> Pardon me. I'll just assume he gave someone his beard, too. Uh, by the way, so wasn't that Sherlock Holmes past? Wait, what? I swear, his face, it looked like that Sherlock Holmes fellow. Oh, no, no, no. His mustache was a little bit thicker than normal. He didn't have a mustache, sir. Come again. Look at the that, that's, how, that's how thick it is. In fact, that man <laughs> gave me his mustache. Oh boy, Berlin. Considering the time date, oh, that's a bit of a powder keg. What, the late 1800s? Uh, sort of. I forget when this movie was that, takes place. Was that place. during one of the German Reich here? Oh, n not quite. No, no, no. That's not to like, um... Yeah, World War Two time, man. Nineteen thirties, forties. That that was the Third Reich. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, let's just say at this time of date, though, Germany is still is a bit of a powder keg. Not as big as a powder keg as it's, it's gonna be later, but yeah. Hmm. Nowadays, it's more of a sporting kind. Yeah. Mainly between us and. Germans. Yeah, you guys really have a rivalry with them when it comes to sports. 
I think it stemmed mostly from the 1966 World Cup final. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, what, implying you don't have one of those already? Are you not good with a horse, Holmes? <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our commentary of, um... The live-action version of Spirit Riding Free. With a My Little Pony. The absolute Coffin. best film, the best film in the series, if you ask me. Probably. Meanwhile, Holmes gets the small one. <laughs> like I said, he gets the pony. <laughs> it's not as if Germany's going somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah, like I said, Germany was a bit of a powder keg back in the day. Yeah. Through the peaks and valleys! Ha <laughs> I don't know what it is. Is Holmes on a Shetland pony? I believe he is. <laughs> Slow and steady wins the race. Oh boy. Dang. You don't want to frighten the horse. That pony just keeps carrying on. It's got some good endurance. So, here we are. Germany. Deutschland. I know a few words of German, mostly because of what I got from watching German language films. Mm -hmm. Let me guess, one of those was Downfall. How did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha I honestly, I can count the number of people who haven't seen Downfall. Well, actually, okay, I know a lot of people who haven't seen Downfall, but Downfall's got to be one of the most popular German films out there. So. Also, the handful of parodies you've made. <laughs> that too, Oh, yeah. so actually, they weren't going to France. Well, they were trying to get a France. They were trying to get a Brighton. Huh. For their honeymoon. Yeah. To Brighton. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I hear it's well, a nice story. This is, this is late 1800s, Brighton. How was it then, I wonder? No idea. Yeah, How is it nowadays? Lovely. Let me guess. Beach... I mean, it's been really nice for a long time, but I'm not sure how far back that goes. So what is it, a beach area? Yeah, it's a, it's a seaside uh, town. Seaside town. I guess yeah. with a name like Brighton, it would need to be bright there. Brighton basically is famous for its um, for its lovely beaches, um, it having a football club in the Premier League, and is known as the gay capital of the South. Oh, nice. Or of the UK in general. Huh. <laughs> the South specifically, the North is considered Blackpool. So the name Brighton huh. really does catch on in quite a few ways. It's also famous for its very quirky shopping district. Ah. Quirky in the sense oh. that what? They sell incredibly extravagant items? Or quirky is in its like Diagon Alley? You have one section where you have all the quirk, all, all like the really lavish and expensive stuff, then you have another section where it's like all the independent shops where, yeah, you're going into more Diagon Alley. Ah, kind of. Okay, then. There is so a Harry it's... Potter shop, funnily enough. Really? So... so it's like, so I think Cardiff was like that. They have little. They have little shoppy arcades where it's um, the more independent ones, including the uh, longest running record shop in the world. It's like how our Universal theme park has its own Harry Potter area, complete with Diagon Alley. It also has. So yeah, Holmes is. Yeah. So let's see what Holmes is here for. Is he trying to stop yet another assassination attempt? Or is it possibly something else? Yeah, needless to say, Germany were quite ahead in the technological race back in the day. So yeah, Moriarty has recently acquired this factory. Hmm. For a, um, I'm guessing a less than pleasant purpose. A global purpose by the looks of it. Potentially war. 
Damn, I knew Moriarty was bonkers, but freaking war? Ho <laughs> ho You have not seen anything yet, my friend. They don't call him the Napoleon of crime for nothing. Telegraphing aunt. Yeah, I might as well say this, the music here is pretty good, also. It sounds ever so Pirates of the Caribbean-esque. Yeah, it's films like this that make me sad that we don't have a German-speaking member on our group. I know, right, for Hans Zimmer? Oh, well, for, I mean, also well, for this part of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, that or is sort of... films set in Germany in general. Yeah. Or, uh, or Austria, or Switzerland. For as much a multinational group we are, we could always use some more. I was expecting you. Mind, you're not exactly a very good hider. Ooh, a Luger. At least it looks like a Luger. Oh, that's nice. He's giving oh, him a, a chance to pick pistol. one. Well, wow, he's being very, um, very sporting considering uh, he's the enemy. Hmm. Don't you just love advancements in technology? Yeah, but you couldn't work it out quicker, you know? Uh oh. Surgery! Doctor! I do think that that may be the term for torture, especially since we're in good old Germany. Yeah. AKA- See, Holmes- Yeah, Holmes left a message. AKA, I may need some help. Hey, at least I gave him a drink. Hey, might as well give the man something nice before we torture him. <laughs> huh. We have to be really smart. Will they get a plan like this off the ground? Oh boy, bombs, missiles, the works. Nation against nation, eh? So basically, he's giving every single country, well, every main country in Europe, plenty of munitions. Yep. Yeah. His plan yep. is to start World War One. A couple of decades early. Yep. How's and that for a master plan, Shiroi? Sure, his burbs. I think. Oh. Don't worry. If, if, when he comes back, or we'll, uh, he'll earn yeah. <laughs> Warned you. <laughs> you were totally warned. Even the movie's telling him. <laughs> oh, oh, sure. Oh, oh. oh. Wow. Yeah. Lovely. So basically, Sherry on... Moriarty's plan is to call a major war across Europe so he can profit from it. Basically, sure, he wants to start World War One, a few decades before it would actually begin. How's that for a master plan? And he's been using different pseudonyms to, uh, you know, to, to make sure he can deal across multiple countries without being detected. Mm-hmm. That's going to hurt. Yeah, Moriarty has a very good singing voice. <laughs> yes. They didn't dub him, like, this is his uh, voice. 
Yeah. Mate, I think. I think. I, I don't. I don't. Because he is pretty good. And it uses a German language song because, well, they get German. Meanwhile, Watson has to contend with, yeah, an old colleague from the army who may not take too kindly to his presence. What was the song called? Uh, Die for a... Mm-hmm. D D Forelli. I mean, it might have been dubbed over. There's it credits. Uh, there's a credit for a guy <sighs> named Ian Bostridge, who's a opera singer. To your ass. <laughs> I mean, it could have been both of them singing it, because I'm pretty sure he was singing along to um, a vocal track there. To your brother, Mycroft. Uh oh. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? My gun's bigger than your gun. <laughs> <laughs> All's fair in love and war, and this is definitely war. Yeah. Oh crap, I gotta get off of it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Perfectly timed, Holmes. Perfectly timed, Watson. <laughs> Very bloody convenient, Watson. That's what's in for you. Always yeah. need that ace up your sleeve. Because you're being kill Holmes. <laughs> How do you explain that in the obituary? Uh, I fired a, I fired a huge gun, and it caused the tower to come off and fall on top of them. It was very awkward, that. It was an accident, I swear. I mean, it was his fault for lying there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what do you mean? Wait, he had a hook in his other arm? Well, pity in, that. In his armpit? He was too stubborn to move. <laughs> Alright, so, needless to say, it's time for us to go. Just make sure you don't blow up the building. Yeah, there's plenty Again. of... Again. There's plenty of bombs to go off. Might as well take some guns of our own. So yeah, Moran somehow managed to survive. Uh, no translation for that. But I think it's easy uh, to say it's go and kill them. Yeah, get the bast- get the bastards. Don't worry, though, you've got a train to catch. It's okay. It'll probably be late anyway. <laughs> oh boy, Watson's back in heat! On the Moriarty Express, no less. How cute. Yeah, you're gonna want to hold your blood in there for a bit. Yeah, br your bros ain't here. Uh. Oh, well, specifics, Holmes, specifics. I saved you with that building anyway. Now's not the time anyway. <laughs> Run! Over the wall. Gotta go fast, gotta go fast, gotta go fast, gotta go fast. <laughs> gotta go fast or die. I'd say that was a tagline for the show, Cobes Free. Go fast or die. Yeah, that wouldn't fit with it. Depends. Maybe the new criminal in that movie will be a speedster of sorts. Ha! Huh. Thanks! 
That works. Blah. Get them. For the oh hole boy. In the wall. If they get away, you are a dead man. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, about those. They may not have the best of aim, but they still have quite a bit of range. Oh yeah, by the way, oh, now we're at this point, and I can tell you a bit about who did this particular bit of the film with the slow motion work. Go on. It's done by a British guy named uh, Gavin Free, who works um, for Rooster Teeth. Really? Rooster Teeth, huh? Yeah, he's been in, um, he's been in, he's been in some shows here and there, such as Ruby and, um, and the slow-mo guys. Literally the slow mo guys. Red versus blue. So it's done a lot of indie work, I see. Yeah. In Ruby, he voiced a character named uh, Scarlet David, whoever he is. Time to introduce little Hansel. Oh boy! As for what little Hansel is, it's a dirty, dirty. Dirty, dirty bomb. Yeah. That takes a lot of uh, work to get done. <sighs> Give him rip down trees. Oh boy. So having learned that fact now watching this scene, um, I can't get out of my head that now there's a connection between Sherlock Holmes and Ricky Ruby. <laughs> huh. Imagine that. He's also done other work in films like Hot F Snow White and the Huntsman Dread. Basically, slow mo is his specialty. Uh huh. Definitely did Hence. a good job of in this movie. Hence the uh, term slow mo guys. So that bomb was enough to rip trees asunder and slow them down. Ah. Shot, but not lethal. This guy's a freaking machine. I guess he really just really wants them dead. Uh oh. Deep breath. In, out. Ow. Oh. oh no, he killed Marco! Whoever Marco was! Yeah, as I mean, there's some, some of these characters are kind of uh, superfluous. But he killed Marco, guys. Marco, oh, no. who? Um. Uh... Yeah, let's say that the new characters aren't exactly the most compelling. And in... I mean, I yeah, obviously they weren't gonna kill Holmes or Watson right there and then, so. Oh no! I mean, uh, I mean, for one, one of the, I mean, for one, the one playing Freaky Holmes is one of the hottest actors on the, in terms of like popularity, is one of the hottest actors on the planet right now. And Lord knows, nowadays, he'll, he'll, uh, Robert Downey Jr. is quite possibly the very antithesis of box office poison, meaning he is quite possibly the very thesis of box office gold at this point. 
just just ignore any film that was between like say his arrest and 2008 oh god yeah that was that was a dark time for him back then yeah well uh, speaking of uh speaking of the um jack downey uh, family his wife's a producer on these films huh nice I, might, I bet she must be thinking, holy cow, hubby, we're actually getting a third one after all. Took a while. Of all the ways for Sorry, him to man. die, for him to die by being a fish on a hook, that would be kind of humiliating. Well, be fair, having a... Having a hook on your, um, in, in your armpit, it's, it's freaking hurts. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, the wedding that's gift. Yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna sting. Speaking of stinging, the wedding gift, the very thing he used on the dog. Let's see if we can bring yeah. him back from the brink. <laughs> 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 ah. Mind, um, it took, it took a while to take effect. A satanic pony, holy cow. The pony turned on him with a pitchfork? Huh. That sounds like the weirdest season of My Little Pony. I mean, it's not the worst, it's not the most weirdest thing Robert Downey Jr.'s had in his chest. Honestly, I'm almost surprised Robert Downey Jr. hasn't been a guest star on My Little Pony, considering how many guest stars they've gotten at this point. And what would you say is weirder? A, um... What would you say is weirder? A, um... A drug that restarts your heart after a slight delay, or a thing, or a giant magnet in your chest. Huh. What I want to know is, is he now typecast as characters with just random shit in their chest? Oh um, uh, he may. <laughs> I guess he may be now. Holy That's an crap. interesting bit of typecasting that he's gotten himself into. I'll say. <laughs> is it really typecasting though? If he's young. It technically is. I mean, that I mean, typecasting implies that there's not just a guy famous for being doing one role, but that there's many people doing that. It's just that he constantly has stuff shoved into his chest now in movies, a bit more commonly than a lot of actors do. He'll Oops, have to so wear like... um, protective vests from now on. <laughs> so yeah, um, basically they're. Um, they're on their way to try and um, stop Moriarty from blowing up a peace summit. Yeah, because, you know, if you blow up a peace summit, that's not going to help the relations between nations. And, um, uh, gee, that waterfall looks familiar, doesn't it? Oh my god, yes it does. So yeah, we can't cancel the summit because, well... It's going to happen anyway, and they really want their peace. So it's cancelling it now is pretty much declaring war. Yep. So we need to improvise. That's okay, we doubled security! That'll totally, totally, totally stop things. Oh, and uh, guess who the, guess who the uh, British government is hit by Croft superiors decided to bring in? To help assist it during the peace summit, Professor what? Moriarty, of course. Yeah, <laughs> we can trust him. <laughs> oh, I'm sure this will be super peaceful. <laughs> Jesus, That's got your germs all over it. Uh, Stanley? Huh. Another one. <laughs> uh -uh. Huh. World War One being started by... Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, supposedly, her brother, Rene, is set to be the gunman to assassinate 
oh, pick any nation whatsoever, and boom, war. Yeah. So yeah, it's either stop the assassination or westernization. But no pressure. <laughs> Oh, by the way, Reichenbach falls. You know, it's funny. It's like how the bad guy in the first film was planning to take over not only all of Britain, but also America after America had been weakened by civil war. Now, here Moriarty wants to, of course, start a war between all nations. In Europe, at least. Yeah. Mind you, if it grows to the whole world. <laughs> that would just be an inconvenience now, wouldn't it? Ah, yes, sir. A great time to have your final confrontation during a dance. Uh-huh. With rulers of all the nations around. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Just... Okay, so basically you have to protect the, um, the German ambassador and the French prime minister and their aides. And, of course, it's Prince Michael from Russia. Hey, Archduke! <laughs> oh, dear. Might as well enjoy the moment while we're here. Also, in terms of uh, things I prefer from the first film over this, it's definitely the female sidekick. Oh, so I take it you... Wait, um, wait. You're saying stuff you preferred from the first film over this? Or this, um, over the first I prefer, film? I prefer Adler from the first film over this one. Adler at least did more stuff. I don't recall much of this one's done. She's just here for her brother to save him. I mean, she tossed a knife at somebody. That's it. But yeah, uh, Holmes doesn't quite know what to do. He doesn't know exactly what the target is yet. <laughs> oh my, Dumbledore, you are ever so forthcoming with your dances, I see. <laughs> hmm. Plastic surgery. Yeah. Well, Bob well, Holmes, for all you know, those 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 might have been twins who hated each other. <laughs> like, really, really hated each other. Plot twist, he's one of the women. I thought it'd be a better plot twist if it were actually the marks, and it would be a better plot twist, but it'd be a more out of nowhere twist than if it were like um, the Mira Passage's character. Really? Huh. That would have been quite a twist. Yeah. I mean, that would mean that the killer, that would mean that she was her brother all along. That's some pretty good plastic surgery. Especially, especially considering the, the time. <laughs> yeah. Also, just like uh, Crimes of Grindelwald, this movie's, uh, one of this movie's final scene is also on a cliffside castle. Wow. <laughs> You'd almost think they were linked. Well, again, Warner Brothers, Jude Law. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
You know, okay, if Johnny Depp ends up being the main bad guy of uh, Sherlock Holmes 3, then it's official. These worlds are linked. Oh God, Joe, I don't want to, I don't want Rowley taking a hatchet to Sherlock Holmes. Oh God. It's okay, it's not her franchise, it'll be fine. <sighs> Warner Brothers might stick her on it. No. Oh God. I, I, I doubt they will. I hope they don't. <laughs> it really is sad how that woman's name went from instilling hope in us to now instilling fear. But anyway, um... So... Back to a more pressing engagement. Yes, a little gentleman's chat outside with the chessboard, which didn't really play that much a factor into this movie now that I think about it. Yeah, I mean, all we did was see him move one chess piece much earlier on in the movie. Hmm. <laughs> of course you wouldn't want him to catch a cold. Yeah, you'll be plenty cold later on. <laughs> a five minute game of chess. Symbolism through chess. Don't you just love it when they do this? Huh. So just look for the the Ah. Okay, there. Yeah. Well, I don't think even the most amazing plastic surge glass lens, glass colored contact lens this era? Yeah, uh, yeah, glass lenses, I guess, were a thing, though they were painful as all hell. Mind, or even modern colored contact lenses. Now, um, that painless. Nah, but at least they're plastic and a lot more flexible. I've tried using contact lens. <laughs> yeah, they are not fun to put in and pull out. <laughs> True that. <laughs> Wouldn't that yeah, be awkward? Imagine. Dr. Watson begins world war. <laughs> yeah, Doctor begins world war. That would be the most ironic title in the history of ever. <laughs> Big. It'd be more ironic than the guy ran... Um, it, 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 speaking of ironic deaths, I learned recently that one of the guys in charge of Trick's concentration camp, if not the main guy in charge, had execution outside Auschwitz. Hmm. That has to be like the most ironic death in all of history. Being executed at the very place you could commit mass murder. Come on. What if that caused World War dropping champagne glasses? Uh, wouldn't surprise me considering how weird days were back in the day. Thankfully that won't. <laughs> My brother, I beg of you. Uh-uh. Sister, forgive me. Yep, that's him. <laughs> no chance. Huh. Ha! Gotcha! Uh-oh. The game's not over yet. 
Oh yeah, he has a backup. Brown. And yeah, there goes his brother. So there goes her brother. Uh huh. No yeah. loose ends at all. Sorry, mom. He's uh, dead. Doctor Who. It would be a weird thing to run on the autopsy report. Shot from, of course, Gentleman's Cane. Don't lick it. <laughs> Great, now you're poisoned because uh, you licked it. Don't you... lick things you just find randomly. Oh, it's okay, it's okay, it's even, okay. Even if, you, even if you spit it out, it's probably still got little traces of Thankfully, he just like, licked... just don't touch it. Thankfully, he just licked it so he didn't get the lethal amount. He dead. Mm hmm. Disagree. Oh. Good point. Basically, his point is, eh, they'll go to war eventually. Sad thing is, he was, uh, kind of right about that. So, if all this comes down to, of course, his profit, what else? Though, to be yeah. fair, it's like the most unbelievable amount of profit you'll get. Yeah, so all my art has got to do is just sit back. And uh, wait until. Huh. Of course they do. It's Switzerland. And he's untouchable here, supposedly. So, the game may have been won. Uh, not over yet. Oh! About your you money. Buy that. <laughs> Holmes and his disguises. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> nope. Yeah. So he just waited to. Coded. Coded yep. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's just really busy and forgets. I mean, he is looking to run a criminal empire. Oh, so safe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, look, look who's here, back from the first movie.
<laughs> She's enjoying this. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful what you fish for. <laughs> Who's the fish? It's very elaborate. Yeah, I, this is it's definitely cool, though. It's definitely my favorite scene in this movie. Al Holmes pretty much makes a fool out of Moriarty. And now Moriarty is bankrupt. All his assets are to now go to the widows and orphans of war. Yep. How cute. The very people he tried to profit off of. <laughs> <laughs> so now Moriarty has nothing. Oh. Oh boy. I. Well then. Nuisance, that'll be. Okay, so, um, time for. Um, Holmes' little mind plan again. Uh huh. No. <laughs> <laughs> he knows exactly what he's thinking, though. Yeah, plus Moriarty could do that too. It does go to show Moriarty is Sherlock's as equal and not only fighting but thinking. Mm. Yeah, step on his foot. Yeah, I'm sure that'll do stuff. It's a classic. Oh, that still though there's that wound. Yeah. Yeah, increasingly negative. Needless to say. Uh, can I persuade you for something else? With a gentle release. <laughs> Doing that just to be a dick, aren't you? <laughs> He's just showing off. <laughs> Or is oh. it? Yep, just get another ha! advantage. Blind him. We call it the Lion King. Goodbye. Oh. Well, well they both go. A yep. physical battle between two of the most, between the most, one of the most no rivalries and, um, and hateful relationships in all liter liter literature yep. ends in like nine seconds. Well, he did it to protect Watson. Yeah. Also slow mo again. I guess again, we can always a, fight on our way down. Oh wait, no, he's just accepting it. Hey, hey, don't don't worry, Sherlock. Your slow mo's been done by a guy from Rooster Teeth who at least look good. Yeah. Boy, Robert Downey Jr. sure has a knack for playing heroic sacrifices in his movies, doesn't he, Sheroy? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, we know there's a Sherlock Holmes free, so do you really think one's gonna stick. Well, to be fair, given the ending of this, everyone was expecting it. It would just take a decade. Yeah, no one was expecting that. And, and no that. one expected that. <laughs> so, crisis averted and Moriarty has been defeated. But we can't find the bodies. Hmm. Both of the bodies. You know, Mycroft is taking the death of his brother really well. Well, he's not one to really show that much emotion. He's... In loving memory of Sherlock Holmes, 1854 to 1891. He yeah. played the game for the game's own sake. That's all thing. A lot of people are there for his funeral. Hmm. How fitting. We started with a wedding and end with a funeral. The two celebrations on opposite ends of the spectrum. I don't think the title One Wedding and a Funeral is that catchy. 
And this is the story we he's been writing. Go figure. Yeah, they're going to give the old honeymoon a try again. Yep. Yep, they'll finally get to go to Brighton. You know what would be funny is if Sherlock Holmes 3 literally opens with them going to Brighton only to once again get attacked. Mind you, how are they explain the 10 year aging of the actors? Mm, I guess the same way they did in Incredibles 2. They'll just run with it. Well, that was more a voice difference, really. Fair point. It was noticeable in some cases, but I get what you mean. Although, when we looked it up, the actors were the same. Mm -hmm. no, the actors yeah. were the same, they just sounded older. Yeah. Again, except for Dash. Yeah, I think Dash had a different I think voice. Dash's um, voice actor was the only one that actually changed. Yeah. Oh? What's this? The breathing apparatus. From Minecraft, who said Holmes couldn't have it, but yet here Watson is receiving it. <laughs> the postman, duh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they pretty much show right there and then that boom, home survived. Oh, so even the dog recognizes him. But, but of how? course the dog would recognize him. It was thanks to that breathing device that his brother gave. Well, didn't give him, but he stole from his brother. Yeah, question mark. The end. Well, as far as, uh, as, as far as fans knew, it was the end for about ten years, but yeah. Well, well unless the film gets delayed again. Oh, God. Um, and yeah, there's, there's, there's no post credit scene, in case you're wondering. So, sure, Royce, and sure, the newest one to this film, why don't you give your final thoughts first? I'm only partially new, as I realized while watching this, because I've seen this movie in parts. Ah... Uh. But never like when I've just managed to catch it on TV. I see. Essentially. But no, um, it's fun. Like, I really like the music and, um... Well... It's also really safe because, you know, it's just Sherlock Holmes being Sherlock Holmes, I guess. <laughs> like, but Robert Downey Jr., of course, but nonetheless, Sherlock yes. Holmes. They, I'm guessing they're changing the cast for this new movie, or... Oh, no, 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 sure, sure, sure. Believe it or not, Sherry, part of the reason the third movie's been delayed is because they've been waiting for Robert Downey Jr. to come back as We blame the Avengers. Yeah, you, yeah, you can blame the MCU for that, actually. Yeah, I guess. It's Marvel's fault. I mean, the MCU demands a lot of time. Which is actually yes, part of the reason uh, why Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans kind of wanted to retire from it. Yeah, well, he'd, he'd been around, you know, for a, the better part of a decade, so... Uh-huh. Yeah. And seeing as how Iron Man was pretty much becoming the face of the MCU, yeah, Robert Downey Jr. didn't have as much time for other movies. Yeah, and definitely the face of Endgame. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it is just um, it's just another good Sherlock Holmes adaptation. Would you say you know you we're like, all very familiar with how this works? Would but, you say dislike yeah. like this one more or a bit less than the first film? Um, I'd say I like this one just a little bit more. Yeah, I can get why. No, but both are both are perfectly good movies, though. Absolutely. And um, Holmes really likes the female disguises in particular. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> 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 to be fair, it really did catch the enemy off guard. Yeah, like it 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 worked. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't really have much to say. All right, then. Honestly. Good movie. It's just a uh, good home movie. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, can I go next? Sure, go on, dribs. Yeah, yeah, it's an enjoyable movie. I just think the plot of the first movie was more... Held together better. ...and the characters a bit... And the newer characters better. Because, I mean... 
I don't really feel much of anything towards the um, the uh, the Rachel McAdams replacements. Um, but that being said, I mean, I did like Moriarty in this film. Um, and, you know, the action was fun, especially the slow-mo stuff, which is something you'll very rarely hear me say, slow-motion stuff being fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this one was... Sorry, sorry to uh, jump in there. This one seemed um, a little bit more comical than the first one, from what I remember. There's definitely more laughs in this one, that's for sure. A bit. Not and that again, there weren't considering... laughs in the first one, but yeah. Like in terms of both the actual comedy and some of the stuff they do during the slow mo yeah. sections. Sorry, My go ahead. I wonder if um, the success of Robert Downey Jr. is having any MCU had anything to do with it. Probably. Yeah, I mean, um, I, mean I remember the whole cross dressing thing was his idea, so. <laughs> I mean, at this point, Robert Downey Jr. was a guy who you just couldn't say no to. I just might have granted I wish someone had said that to him when they suggested the screenwriter for Iron Man 2, but whatever. We'll get to oh, he suggested we'll that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah but because because he did a good job in Bob, he was one of the writers of Tropic Thunder. True. Oh, okay. So I guess to be fair, he had good reason to trust him. We'll just have to figure out what the hell went wrong with Iron Man 2 later. When we get to that. But anyway, yeah, that's my thoughts on this movie. Very fun, I just prefer the first one a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That leaves me. Yeah, I slightly like this one better than the first one. The first one is great. This one's great too. I think what gives me the pushover for this one is I like how it mixes comedy but also serious moments and Moriarty is just such an awesome villain in this one. Like, it does one thing we do have to wonder. It's unless they're going to bring Moriarty back as well. You have to wonder who's going to be the main bad guy of it. God forbid it be a second in command. <laughs> I, do I, they? I have... Do they? Oh, sorry. Well, well, don't, well, don't worry, Jova. Because Dexter Fletcher, the guy who directed the recent Rocket Man movie about Elton John, is going to be helming Sherlock Holmes three at the time of this recording. So I have faith. Nice. You were saying something, Shoei? Do both of them have an enemy between them? Hmm. Huh. Not sure. That could be an interesting tale to take. I think there may have been an opponent that the two shared. Maybe a mutual threat of sorts. That would actually be interesting for a third movie. Oh, so I'd imagine, like, both of them survived anyway, so... Yeah, especially since neither of the bodies were found. They're both as smart as each other. Yeah. And Lord knows Moriarty's gonna be hungering for some vengeance after that. <laughs> Plus, you, plus Holmes ruined his looks. Yeah, that too. <laughs> and his body. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine uh, since he did not have a breathing apparatus, he probably suffered a bit more than Holmes did in that drink. Yeah. But Providing he... he actually hit the water, not um, rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The music is definitely very nice. You know, the first already had a memorable theme. This one has a very good theme overall here and there, too. I enjoy the writing. The characters are fun. I'll admit some characters are kind of introduced just to get axed. Oopsie there. But hey, what you gonna do? Overall... Well, one character only returned to get axed. <laughs> but hey, you know, I mean, um, in, in, the, in the case of Irene, you know, it was a necessary sacrifice, as they do say in the game of chess. And in the movie. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, then. But yeah, overall enjoyed it. So yes, folks, join us in, well, as of the time of this recording, at least two years from now. And hopefully <laughs> we'll get to commentate eventually on Sherlock Holmes free. Yeah, de depending on um, a, a, a lot of things, whether any of us the group, whether um, the film does release around that time, if it, if at all. God forbid it gets cancelled. Oh god, I can just hear the, the RDJ Sherlock Holmes fans' hearts breaking at the thought of that. Well, mine was break too. I love going to these films every Christmas, every near Christmas with my friend. Yeah, yeah, I mean, these films are good fun. Plus, I mean, well, the only thing is that Guy Ritchie's not doing the third one. But hey, like you said, the guy from Rocket Man is filming this, and. Yeah. That gives you faith. So, Godspeed to you all, and we'll see you next time.